Oh, what is good, everyone? Welcome Yo. back to episode 19 of MFMF's Heavy Hitter segment. Yes, we've been gone for a while now, but took a break to do some traveling, kick it with the family on for the holidays and all that. But we are back to be posting every Friday. And with that being said, I'd like to welcome Filthy. Yo. <laughs> so fuck yeah, dude. I've been listening to your shit for like a while now. I put a decent amount of your songs in my sets and shit. Like, hey, fuck yeah, man. Oh, yeah. No, I'm super hyped to do this. Um, hope the holidays were fire for you. Uh, to be honest, I, I catch COVID like right at Christmas. But oh, yeah. Oh, no. damn. I, yeah, I just produced for like two weeks. So it was good. I was just say, yeah, that's probably perfect time just sit there and not worry about anything and just grind yeah. out some music yeah that's no, the best time like like the past two years i've been shitty as fuck but to just be in your room and produce like you, it's like the perfect like template for you to actually like it's the only thing you have to do so might as well learn exactly you gotta worry about work or like going yeah. out anywhere anything you just Sitting at home, kicking it. That's perfect. Yeah, um, well, I'm hyped well to be productive. Exactly. Stay stay active in some way. I'm hyped to hear what uh what you cooked up during all that. Oh yeah, man. I have some good I I have a showcase coming in the next month and probably like two release in the next m- month or two. It's okay. gonna be a, it's gonna be a nice year for sure. Oh yeah, and I'll definitely keep my eyes out for that. So looks like you've been putting in work. Uh, your song Binary made on uh, Rhythm Networks Volume 4. Huge props on that. That song is just a certified banger, dude. That shit's crazy. Hey, thanks, man. <laughs> um, it's not your only Rhythm Network release, though. Uh, you got two other songs. Yeah, actually, there. my first, like, label release was on Rhythm Network. I have this fucking thing here in my room oh shit <laughs> that's dope oh yeah no, i love the stuff they're constantly putting out it all it's always sick like you have your first like label release it's it's always it's like a huge uh, like level of accomplishment like big milestone yeah oh, oh yeah. yeah man after that i i had like rain legs two times and uh, yeah a collab with a uh, bones noise yeah, man, this one is like probably in, it's in my top three from all the song I've made, I think. Dude, yeah, no, that is another just amazing song. Now, how you fucking do it? <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, looks like you also bid on Festival Trap and uh, MDP Records as well. Yeah. So you're just out here getting shit done. Yeah, man, it's trying my it. best. Just trying to network and get my shit heard like the more places I can awesome that's why I love to hear a big part of doing this is yeah trying to get um a lot of, you know attention to more kind of underground names and you know yeah. put the spotlight it's, where it's it's deserved. hard like when you start it's hard to have like like actually like account or like answer your email and stuff like that because like nobody knows like you need just one people that give you like a chance and after that you have way more credibility to like go like the next step but yeah the first time like the first couple release you're trying to like release on label or like like get other artists listen to you it's always super hard Mm because you're just like nobody knows who you are so yeah. yeah it's, it's real always easy like going step at a step like going slow but like making sure that you're making progress because i think some people like they start making music and they they want to be excision like straight up they're, they're like oh shit like i want to be big tomorrow yeah why aren't i playing festivals like what the yeah. hell a uh, lot of people quit because like it's it takes so much time to like years actually like making stuff that are like listen and like playable mm-hmm. this is crazy how much goes into all that 
especially once you take it to the point of playing on like loud uh, stadium speakers, you know, your shit's got to be yeah. very fine tuned and sounding perfect. And that's just years of work. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. So starting off with some good basics. Uh, what's your real name? Where are you from? And what made you choose the name Filthy? So my real name is Philip Theriot. So that's where the name Filthy came from because I'm like Phil Terio T. Okay, and, okay. Uh, I'm uh, from Gatineau in Canada. It's like 10 minutes away from like Ottawa. And nice. uh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Nice. I like that. Because I thought like, um, it's just like, I oh, did filthy. My shit's filthy. So I'm filthy. But I like yeah, that no, little wordplay. Like everything was making sense with the name and everything. So I was like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> nice i love that and i probably uh, start like making music at like 13 or like 14 really? now I'm 21 so yeah it's been a while but it wasn't like when i started i was so young that it wasn't like oh shit every day i'm making it was like i was making music two days and then stopping for like a month and then like coming mm-hmm. back for two weeks and just i started making music because i just i liked it and just for fun, pretty much. So. Yeah, that's definitely been uh, my problem as someone just starting out with production is definitely that, like, trying to stay consistently, yeah, at least practicing so or something. Because sometimes it's like you're going to be so fired, like, the whole week you're going to make bangers, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then the next week you're going to make the shittiest stuff, like, that you ever did, and you're like, fuck. I'm just fuck this and yeah uh yeah. struggle is real <laughs> oh yeah then you're gonna make something fire and you're never gonna finish it or like shit like that always happen and that's the worst but then it's kind of fun when you go back in your files and you see like an old file and you pull it up and you listen to it you're like oh shit this oh, is yeah. kind of cool that happens a lot or like you're drunk or high and then you open like a whole project like what the fuck i made this <laughs> the fuck is that uh, i had a experience like that i tried making a hard style once and i was just fucking hammered and then i opened it up <laughs> a couple of weeks later i was like oh my <laughs> god <laughs> oh yeah man. always happen uh so what would you say has been uh the most important life lesson outside of music that you've taken away uh from being a musician mm. Like that, you need to have good people around you to be good, if it makes sense. Like, yeah, if you're all like the people you're with are like negative and like, like not having a a good focus or like a a good mindset, you're going to have their mindset too, because you're like a sponge. You're just going to be like a resume of all the friends or people you have that are close to you mm-hmm. so like going like having friends that have a big vision and that are like better than you will just help you grow bigger than if if you're with people that fucking do drugs every day and fucking go to bar just for fun you're mm-hmm. you're gonna end up being that kind of people because you're this is your whole like your reality is your friend are like that you're gonna become like that yeah like, i explained it in the shittiest way because uh, no that um, made perfect sense that made <laughs> absolutely perfect sense i totally the, uh get the what french you're part of me it makes it hard <laughs> yeah no you're killing it you're doing great um <laughs> Yeah, no, I definitely feel like that's important, especially I see how th- that could be pulled from uh, the music industry, you know, where there's a lot of partying and stuff going like that and kind of leechy people who, you know, just kind of... A lot of drama and people that doesn't care about the right thing. Like, mm-hmm. they're going to say like, oh, have you listened to this? And like, I don't even care. Like, it's all... <laughs> And people are like, oh, is this person going to judge me? Is this person going to, like, judge my set? Like, the only person who's going to judge you and, like, talk shit about you are people that are lower than you. Yeah. You're never going to see, like, a big artist hate on a fucking local DJ because he missed one transition. 
Like mm-hmm. he he know is good. He doesn't have anything to prove to like everyone. Like oh look at no no. It's just people that are gonna like laugh about you and shit like that are people that are lower than you. Exactly, and that's something I've noticed. Um, asking for help from you know bigger artists, bigger than me. I'm, I'm like it's always constructive criticism. It's either something good or it's something constructive to like help you and not just like, Oh, that sounds like trash, dude. What are you doing? Oh, man. You learn yeah, way more lower with level. other artists that you like than like any course or YouTube video you're, you're ever going to see. Cause they say the real stuff. Like you take 15 minutes with them. You're going to learn more than a whole year alone, trying your best. So it's always good to, to have some good connections and be friends mm-hmm. with the people that like you think are good. Yeah. Cause like you're saying, you know, if your friends are people making absolute bangers, then that's what you're going to end up basically doing. Basically it. That's, that's basically it. Oh yeah. Um, so if you could go back in time and change anything about your music career, what would it be? And if there's nothing you would change, is there any like tips, tricks, or advice you would uh, give yourself? Hmm. Maybe it's not with the music, but maybe learn some like graphic design stuff or mm. like some like a video 3D animation stuff. That yeah. will help a lot, like with your vision and your branding and everything. And it's way less expensive, probably. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That'd yeah, be I cool. I don't think of anything I will have changed. I think uh, we, you do error, you fucking learn from it, and you become better. Exactly. Everything's a lesson or a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool, though. No, I definitely feel that because uh, I've been trying to find someone to do a logo for me because I was like just rebranded and uh, not using my old logo anymore. And it's it's pricey. It's hard. It's it'd just be so much cooler if I could just sit there, whip it up myself. And oh man, it's so expensive. Like just a teaser video that's like for one song. It's gonna cost you at least two hundred bucks, like if it looks good. And this is like discouraging because if you want to be consistent and look good and everything is perfect, dude, it's it's gonna cost a shit ton of money. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's fucking the struggle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> One of the things I hear a lot of artists struggle with, speaking of the struggle, (laughs) is uh, balancing uh, working like, you know, in a DAW for hours and maintaining healthy relationships with like friends and family or a significant other. Um, You know, how do you handle this? And is this something you feel like you struggle with? Mm, Not that much. I think like it's not just for like music stuff but anything in general is just a question of balance like on how how you manage your time like if you do like too much production of course like people around you are going to be like oh why are you not spending time with me and like if you go too much with your friends your production's gonna suck so that suck but uh, like whatever Tinder, yeah <laughs> so yeah it's just a question of taking the time doing the right thing and the thing you want the most like if you want to be good at producing just spend more time producing and you eventually be better at it oh yeah practice makes gotta (laughs) gotta choose your battle somewhere Mm -hmm. yeah now that's uh yeah kind of going back on what i was saying earlier it's hard sitting there being like should i sit at home and produce tonight or go out with the friends especially when you know my roommate's going out and he's like yo dude you want to come with and i'm just like yeah. oh, fuck because people don't understand that it's good to take break like every time mm-hmm. like i haven't produced like a month before like uh, maybe not a month but like three weeks in the like uh, christmas time and when i i went back 
it I was like way better. Like everything was way better, made more sense. Yeah. Like, I noticed that too. It's kind of weird how that is. Like, you know, you'll work on something for a while, you'll be grinding on it a lot and just be like, eh, and then you give it a break for a good week or so. And then you come back and it's just like flow. And it's just like Yeah, but it, I guess it's like going to the gym a little bit, like you you go train something and then you gotta take a break to get like bigger yeah and stronger got let heal up and all that yeah oh yeah um oh, this is my favorite question oh, so man. what is the craziest thing you ever witnessed at a show either like while playing or in the crowd just something that happened that just made you question if you're actually like seeing that <laughs> well, it's probably a lot it's I don't know, probably people taking too much MDMA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they take too much MDMA and they look like fucking monsters, man. You're like, is this a real person? Like, <laughs> is this like eyes sick? all bulging out, oh, like yeah. grinding their jaws and uh oh yeah. Buddy. People are strange sometimes, like oh yeah at, at shows and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, I always see some questionable things. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, of course. Oh shit. Um, so what got you into EDM? Did you like find it on your own? Was it a friend or maybe like an older brother or something? And uh who were the first artists you listened to um early on and maybe even like first couple shows or festivals or something mm. like that? To be honest, I think I've just always only listened to EDM. Nice. Like, I I started like being a, a DJ. I was like 10 years old, maybe. Wow. Because like one of my the friends of my father was a like a as a ready residency, like at the beach club. It's like a huge club here. And uh, he had like some DJ equipment that he wasn't using anymore. It's like, oh, uh, do you want it? So he gave it to my father and I just started to like mess around and <laughs> like with the old CD and shit, like you had oh, to burn a CD. Shit. And I was just like turning the, like the, there was no like filter on it. It was just like the low, mid and highs. And I was just like turning these down. <laughs> and was just like, what the fuck? But yeah. <laughs> I think I went to my first festival was uh, Skrillex. Uh, I don't know if it was Mothership Tour, but oh, it, it was alone. That, I think it was my first show. Like, and it was a huge festival. It's, it's the name of the festival is called Blues Fest in Ottawa. Okay. But it's like a 13 day with like all the what? big like, yeah, it's 13 with days. All, like, the biggest like artists in the world just come here damn and the next i think yeah the next year i was playing at that festival i was like 12 oh shit and it was the same day as lady gaga and like other <laughs> people like that so i was just like backstage with my friend i had no clue what the fuck like was going on it was like my first festival and you know i just go backstage with my friend we are like 12 so we're super young <laughs> and there's like a some uh, like professional cook like cooking some stuff and we're like oh like how much is it and he just start laughing he's like everything here is free man <laughs> and there's like a fucking rock star like fridge with like just full of rock star and we're like oh even that fridge <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's like yeah man and we just like put like four in her fucking oh pocket and we God. just like, uh, <laughs> that was some good holy shit that sounds crazy and I think like the year after or two years after was like Jack U. Like Damn. The, yeah. Was young, but like these like four years were the best, like for shows and stuff. Yeah. Like Mothership Tour, Jack U. And I saw Dog Blood too when they were like at, like uh, Skrillex and Bo Boys Noise. I think yeah. Yeah, it was uh, yeah. some some good show. Damn, that's crazy. Oh, I couldn't even imagine just being 12 and doing that. And then a 13-day festival, too. Holy shit. Like, I know after 
and I go to like EDC or Base Canyon after day three, I'm like, oh, I think shit. it's because it's just like all genre, like it's like all the big artists from each genre just come. There's like five stage or something. Yeah, it's damn. Yeah, it's fucking great. That sounds set up. Um, so did you have some kind of a big eye opener once you fully dove into the music scene? Um, like making rhythm mm. or dubstep is harder than originally thought, or uh, maybe it's yeah. kind of like you're saying, harder to get record releases. And yeah, some yeah. A, spi a spicy thought <laughs> is, <laughs> is that I just... Like, you know, I started DJing, I was young. And at some point I just realized that I'm never gonna go nowhere if I'm not producing. Yep. Like that was it. I was like, like, like local DJ that's not producing or just pushing play from mm -hmm. producers music. Yeah. Like you're just like, I want to be an artist. Like I want to be like, Oh, people come see me to hear my stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's why at some point I was like, I need to start like producing. If not, I'm never gonna be like nothing. And that's why I slowly started when I was young. And I didn't do like shows after because I just wanted to produce and stuff. And nice. Came back like <laughs> like fucking six years later. Yeah. Uh, what age were you when you started producing? I think I was. 14 14 nice and now i'm 21 oh yeah yeah damn Whew. how old are you i'm 23 just okay, turned yeah, 23 yeah, yeah. Uh, i started i've been on off for about two to three years now around there kind of had a big break for a while because i uh, moved from california to colorado and mm -hmm. uh didn't have a laptop charger so i had no laptop for a while and uh now i got that up and going then it's been grinding ever since oh yeah man after like one year or two it, that's where it start to to be fun mm -hmm. like you have a enough of a basic to like do stuff that makes sense and after that it's yeah. just practicing like what i i've done it it's seven years because i was like young and i did it super slow but What I've learned in like seven years, you can do it in two years, like if you actually like stay consistent and stuff. Oh yeah, and grind at it. Like I see uh, people talk about like doing like eight hours a day for years on end. I'm just like, holy shit, that, that is like a full-time job pretty much at that But point. Th the best trick, like if you want to, like people ask oh, how to do this with your mix down like even if i tell you everything i know you're literally gonna probably sound the exact same you just have to practice and do it mm -hmm. like you're just you have to accept the fact that your track are gonna suck for a while and you just need to practice it until it doesn't suck anymore just trial and error until you figure like, out what works just, at some point you can hear like the the frequency like which frequency you have too much and stuff so it's just your ear you can you practice and you're gonna learn by yourself like it's the the way i see it like mm -hmm. just gotta you just need to practice and practice and do it until yeah. it become good that's a I feel like one thing a lot of people struggle with is when you make something and it doesn't sound the way you want it to, you know, just get annoyed with it and then you don't want to do it anymore. But you just got to find that like fine line of going through it and just being like, okay, I'm not going to like how it sounds for a little bit. And I'm only yeah. going to get it there by keep practicing and trying it. But the thing is like every time you make a song and you finish it, you're going to be better than what you were when you were doing that song. So you're going to be like, oh shit, that song sucks. So I need to start something else. But mm -hmm. you just need to accept like, this is where I was with music production. And this was like part of me. So do I want to release this or not? And 
sometimes like people are focusing too much on little details that people are never even gonna realize it was there or like on too much stuff yeah Mm -hmm. i feel that um so do you have like a backup plan if music doesn't work out or do you just know music is what you're meant to do and there's no need to think of anything else Uh I'm a, my like real job is I'm a combat engineer in the army. So oh shit. that's like my full-time job. Yeah. But yet like, yes. If like, mu- if music like become like a full-time thing, like I will just quit the army and like do this full-time. But mm-hmm. right now it's, it's good to have like a stable job and stuff. Cause I'd probably like fucking be homeless if I was just living off music. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that is crazy. I think I've like the years I've been like DJing and all that. You know, only made like fifty or seventy dollars, something like that. Just and most of the most of the like local DJ here, like they don't even get paid. Yeah, like they they just get abused by like fucking event like organization that want to just oh i can book them and don't even have to pay dude and they just like book a bunch of these and they mm-hmm. get like one huge headliner or like someone like me they're gonna pay mm-hmm. that's like a like producer in like the, the local scene and that's it did yeah it's now all these People out here just want to play, and they're just like, they just know yeah. they'll play for free. Yeah. Yeah, I know a lot of these people. <laughs> I, I, some people, it's like they're fetish or something, like, oh, I want to release a song. Like, I want to be a DJ. I'm like, like it's you're supposed to do it because, like, you want, like, by yourself. It's not like a social thing, like, oh, you mm-hmm. become a god. You just released a song good job you're now famous and rich yeah and that's what uh kind of sucks when you're at like a local show and you see someone who like just released a song or something and they're still very underground local level but they're just like you know kind of got that little arrogance about them oh yeah it's kind of like all right cool their balls are dragging on the floor (laughs) (laughs) But the thing, like, people think, like, oh, I'm going to release a song, it's going to be a banger, and, like, fuck, I'm famous. But the reality hits when you release your first song and you have, like, 50 plays, and you're like, oh, shit, it's not how it works. <laughs> like, oh, shit, it's going to be way harder than I thought. Because they put so much time and effort into that one song, and then they finally get out there, and it's just like, yeah, like, 50 plays or something. And it's like, oh, yeah. I got to do that again, plus better yeah consistently like uh that's why like all the people most of the people quit in the beginning because they don't even do it for themselves and for the good reason in the first place so it's hard to just like get a lot of fucking fail and be like oh yeah i'll just continue if you're doing it for the wrong reason you're just gonna Mm -hmm. be like it doesn't work but if you do it for yourself you're just like like most of the time, I just make music. I make whips that I'm never going to finish just to listen to it in my car, like when I go somewhere. Mm-hmm. See, I can't wait to get to that level. I'm almost there. I do that with like mixes. I'll like, you know, be like, oh, I got a decently long drive coming up and do a little 30 minute mix and I'll just listen to it while driving. But it's good. Like, even you're, if you're not like a huge professional, like she's phase one, like, it's good to like listen to your track and then listen mm-hmm. to like good people's tracks so y- you can see the contrast of like oh i need to do this more like you're doing a feedback like f- for yourself mm-hmm. like oh shit i i need more highs i need more mids like it's good uh, another layer or something yeah um I feel like you kind of brushed on this a little bit, but what has been the hardest part of being a DJ dash producer and what steps do you take to combat this problem? And hmm. hardest part. 
it's been so long like what's been the <laughs> hardest part it's pretty much been that my whole life i've just been a dj or a producer everywhere i went so just got comfortable with it real quick yeah it's it's struggling this maybe just fucking getting people to listen to you first or mm -hmm. it's just the whole like pattern of like production is a whole struggle itself <laughs> but you just gotta like embrace the, through it. the like the the progress like it's gonna suck and you have to like love it like it's, it's <laughs> shitty you're gonna have shitty mix downs you're still gonna have shitty mix downs in like four years and just gotta like embrace it and be like this is where i was and look you at the from improvements it. yeah yeah you learn from it like yeah. worst case you just do a side like a side project that's what i'm thinking about doing like soon because you just start from scratch but with all the knowledge you have so mm -hmm. it's way easier to like just be like on point i think that's a, a lot of artists do that i think actually oh yeah like the marshmallow thing like the, it was just a side project that he started like in the beginning and yeah blew up like right away oh yeah and then the whole void thing too yeah um if you did a side project would it be the same genre or would you switch it up I'm thinking maybe of doing a, a house one. Nice. And maybe another just like dank rhythm thing like of clip and unfinished stuff. Nice. Like most of the like rhythm project that blow up are just like the, the cheesiest one with the shittiest fucking graphic. Yeah. It's like the whole point of the like branding is to be like shitty, but it's what it makes it nice yeah no i definitely see that a lot like you know a song's gonna be fire if it has some like shitty 8-bit like game character cover or something yeah something super weird you're like oh this is gonna be great but it always ends up being like, super fire like, there's a song like a the the no, name of the artist is like boog and the name of the track is deadly horse ritual and yes. the artwork is just a horse, but dude, the song is oh, insane. Dude, it's so good. Yeah, the song is insane. Oh, I just love that choppy machine gun sound. Yeah. Just, oh, it's amazing. Um, so last question. If you're not already, at what point will you be content with your music career? Hmm. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's just gonna like happen by itself. Like, I think I, I've always been at my peak, like at my best. So I just like, like every day I'm learning. I'm like, I'm doing mistake that I learned from it. So like, I'm just growing as an artist, as a person. So mm -hmm. just with time, I'll just be just where i want yeah he's just naturally feeling just be like you know what this is great this is dope yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah that's it i hear a lot of opposite answers for that question you know sometimes it's either uh i'm always content with what i'm doing and happy with it or it's always the opposite of i'm never content i don't want to be complacent with where i'm at and like you know just stay here i want to always be pushing that better. must be so shitty man people that are like too competitive and fuck that must be like you people these people must be stressed as fuck like mm -hmm. i i can't imagine being like fuck this is not good enough like oh fuck like, yeah fuck, like i was saying earlier just that perfect balance of yeah, having enough like, drive but being happy with your yeah sometimes you just gotta give up like fuck it i'm not most of the time it's just like well fuck it this don't this song is finished like it's finished mm -hmm. it. <laughs> like, uh, at some the... point you're just gonna like touch stuff and it's gonna sound worse or so like you know what fuck it mm -hmm. just overthink it and then there's a, always that problem when you 
listen to the same thing over and over again you just don't like it no more even if it was really good to begin with and really fire and you probably should have just left it but just trying to tweak it you just but that's the thing the more like simple you keep it the better it's gonna sound Mm -hmm. like we just like when i was like maybe two years producing or four years i was like doing so much post-process like blasting everything without knowing what the fuck i was doing doing like thousands of effects for no reason and now my post process is sounds way better and i maybe have like three or two effects and it's like stuck fl studio plugin nice like, yeah like you just need to like not overthink it like if you do something like do it for a reason mm-hmm. and yeah simplifying things definitely um a big eye opener for me was watching G Rex do like a workshop because you know at first I thought G Rex, you know, he's probably doing some crazy shit. He's probably a wizard in serum and he's probably doing all this insane shit. And I watch him. It's probably he, super simple, but just well. Super processed. simple, mostly splice. Didn't even uh open up serum that much. It mostly samples and just like super simple stuff, but just makes the craziest sounds and it, that was a big eye opener for me. It's like, wow, you can really just do the, you know, simplest shit and make the biggest fire and some insane heat. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Well, shit, that's it for this week's episode, guys. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Huge thanks for Filthy for uh, taking time out of his day to do this uh both of those things mean a lot to me and i just deeply appreciate it uh you can find a link for filthy's most recent song binary in the comments as well as all his uh social media accounts and all that and yeah again thanks huge thanks for everyone and hope to see you next week